Less Online is going free to play. MMO Games got an interview with the developers, so they asked them a few questions on it. So the first and obvious question is, what made you change your mind on the game's business model? For the past 5 months of early access, we have updated Bless Online with a variety of content and have received a lot of feedback from our North American and European players and collected meaningful data. With the official release now before us, we have been immersed in preparing and improving player experience. The next level quality service using the data that we've been collecting during the EA as the foundation. Basically, an almost an answer. Let's just move on forward. The next obvious question, perhaps. What makes Bless Online's cash shop avoid being called pay to win? When Bless Online was presented on Steam, we understood that players in North America and Europe tend to value fairness, and according to developed, a principle to stay away from pay to win. In line with this principle, we avoided having items in the shop purchasable with paid currency that could have a direct impact on your game experience. Instead, we focused on having cosmetics and convenience items for players to buy with currency, such as costumes, mount skins, and combat XP bonuses. We also implemented a feature that allows players to exchange their content points earned from playing game into paid currency. We are doing our best to match our perception of paid with our players and make sure everything is aligned. However, we are well aware of the players' worries that we may change our mind along the conversion to free to play. While this is not the case, we are going to work extra hard to both try to avoid any pay to win and to correct quickly with patches if we misjudge any new aspect of the game. Well, that's kind of the answer us MMO players want to hear. Obviously games like Black Desert also made this promise and that its developers forced the publisher to yeah, screw that, let's just add all the win. So, it's an interesting claim. If they keep it, it would be really great, because quite honestly, I have yet to see an Eastern MMO that is not paid to win, or ended up with paid to win. Moving on to the next question. Many people accuse Nailwiz of using early access as a cash grab. Are you concerned that a free to play launch will poison the well against anything the game's cash shop offers? We believe that the transition to free to play will now have a big impact on revenue growth. Since it still adheres to the anti pay to win principle, and since there won't be a significant change in sales structures, the biggest reason why we decided to have free to play transition during the official launch was because we wanted to provide the best experience possible for players in content that works best with a high number of players, such as PvP, PvE, and Siege of Castro. Well, I mean, that's obvious reason they want more players, which is great. I'm an on and off player and I like to play several games and personally what was putting me off in Bless was not having enough players so hopefully this launch will bring in more players and I'll get to share some nice experience with you guys. Moving on though. What kind of item can we expect to see in a cash shop? The free to play switch will not change any of the items that are available at the cash shop. We will continue to add new costumes, pet skins and mount skins just as before. And again, this is what I hope they do. Because honestly, cosmetics are the way to go. Like, people kind of like having outfits. And in this game, armors actually look good, by the way. So you're not really forced to buy any cosmetics. Plus, events also give away some goodies. Has the general negativity surrounded the more vocal people in places like Steam had any effect on the decision to go to free to play? Well, I mean, before we read this, of course it had to have some impact. I mean, come on. Let's read the answer. Player feedback and comments have played an important role when improving the content of the game during early access. However, the decision to switch free to play was not made because of our awareness about the negative comments, but rather because we weren't blessed to become a game that everyone loves and can enjoy for a very long time. But yeah, if you're developing a game, you want people to enjoy it, and hence play it, so you kind of need people. I mean, personal opinion, you guys probably already know that I never wanted buy to play Because I already seen it work terribly in Black Desert, and I honestly don't like that in games. So yeah, free to play should have been like that from the get-go, but hey, better late than never, right? Moving on though, do you think the shift free to play will help repair relations with those who perhaps feel disappointed? 
We think that the official launch will be a great opportunity for players to see all the progress we've made since the start of the Early Access. We of course hope that those who already purchased less during Early Access will also enjoy the Founders, thanks to the gifts that we plan for them. And we hope that they will also enjoy the new content that will be arriving with Lily. We think all players, both new and old, will be able to experience less in a great new way at official launch. My opinion, honestly, on this one, is that I don't think it's going to repair with old players. But they will definitely be able to impress new players if they get their act together. Like, I'm in opinion that this is a bit rushed to launch. In a month. Less than a month, actually. That's just too short. But if they have been developing and listening to the feedback that us emissaries and players in general have been giving Reddit, especially on the Discord, then on Steam, I think they will get it right if they listen to it. But as you guys know, MMOs are always developing, and we'll see how that goes, honestly. What do you say to those who believe that this game is unfinished and being rushed out of the door? Mm -hmm. We know that when Early Access began, there was a mismatch between our expectations of EA and many of our players' expectations. We saw EA as a time to actively de active development, where we could work closely with the community, gathering and implementing their feedback as we prepared Bless for its official release later in the year. However, we think that when players experience Bless at launch, they will see just how we've come since the start of EA. Well, personal opinion once again. The first launch patch for EA was absolute garbage. Like, er it had nothing to do, and the balancing was terrible. And then a few days later, they made it far, far worse. So yeah. I mean, if that was the player's first experience, then I'm pretty sure the launch patch is going to be like way better, because the game improved gradually over time. It's way better now than it was at launch. It's still not up to my standard, personally. I play games for fun, so... And I'm waiting for the future, as you guys know. So let's move on. You recently confirmed your selection for the Bless Emissaries. Do you think they'll help in bringing Bless Online into a new light? They replied, Absolutely! We believe that each and every one of our Emissaries will not only help to bring Bless to a new audience, but also to show off the game in their own unique ways. In the program, we strive to encourage not just participation, but creativity as well. The next emissary activities are planned for Halloween content, but that will just be the first step. Well, as I just mentioned, I am an emissary, so yes, I will also have some of those stuff upcoming soon. So please, uh, you know, stay around and maybe subscribe. I'll post it anyway. So yeah, that is true though. Personal opinion: the emissaries do give feedback. We follow we forward all the feedback that people give us, so yeah, if you guys also have any feedback then please leave it to me, and I will gladly pass it on to the team. Now moving on. How's the team had regrets and how they've handled early access? Is there anything that you feel could have been done differently? We felt that despite some unexpected issues at the start, early access was a success. Of course hindsight is 2020, and we wish that we had have had a better idea of what player's expectation of early access would be going into it. As mentioned previously, we saw EA at the time of ongoing development and improvement, while many players ended up expecting a fully complete game. Having more knowledge of this would have helped us prepare better set players' expectations for EA. Yes, this is a good answer right here. You see, I saw a lot of people expecting the game to be like in the state of the Japanese patch, for example. I mean, there was kind of a radio silence near the launch towards the game, so yeah, I think they should have communicated better, because honestly, I personally never expected more than 5k people getting the game at launch, for example, to try it out, you know, and suddenly, so many people bought the game, there was 40k plus peak? I mean, there was servers were plagued with issues, like, this would have never happened if expectations were set more closer to reality. People were expecting too much, and Naois, quite frankly, did not communicate properly. Now, what sort of things do you hope the team will do in order 
to demonstrate that Blast Online is a completed, finished and fully realized MMO. Blast's official launch will be content complete. Throughout early access we've been continuing to add new content and Im make improvements and we think that it's finally in place that we want it to be for release. With launch comes a whole new raid and afterwards sometime in November we have an update plan focused around raising the cap to level 50. That would be awesome. From launch onwards, players can expect to see brand new content that they would expect to be added post launch, just as with any other MMO title. Okay, now that's what I'm interested in. So basically, until November it's all the old content, so in November they'll probably add the final 50 areas that we know from Korea, which is awesome because that's the ones I'm most looking forward to and I will definitely share my gameplay on the channel but yeah they mention here new content as any other MMO now that yes is what will help players get the idea that this is not a cash grab people want to see actual new content because the game has kind of been in standby for years as we all know plus they have side project from another internal studio which is the console version and there's a mobile version from another company using the same IP as well, intellectual property. So yeah, it's gonna be quite interesting though, quite frankly. I'm really hyped for that. I really can't wait to see actual new content because as I played other versions, I kinda already know what's coming. Up until that point that is. Okay, next question. Do you think that early access was a bad idea? Would things have been different if the game were tested internally or with a select number of outside testers? Definitely not. We are glad that during early access we were able to work closely with the community to gather their feedback and make improvements to Blast based on it. We are grateful to the players that they were willing to share such valuable feedback with us. It was because of players feedback on the combat system that we originally implemented the combat rework for the Steam version of Blast. Having players get a feel for the game in a live environment can over time produce the most useful feedback. I agree and disagree at this one, actually. Like, the feedback though is great, honestly. They're going to get, they have a lot of our feedback, and it's really nice to see that they actually have to read it. However, I don't really think this is the combat that people ask. Like, I kind of think people were more expecting a more action-oriented combat, a bit more action than this. Kind of like what the console version is getting to, but I do like the changes that they did. It is better than the original. However, I do wish there was a bit more flexibility in the skills. Like if you could select your skills in the tree, in the chains, it would make it much better. That's just a personal opinion, of course. We'll see how they goes into the future. What features can players expect when Bless officially launches? Besides, of course, all the many improvements and content updates that have been added over time since EA, players can look forward to a German localization being added, an assorted of fixes and adjustments, and a whole new raid. We also plan to provide early access users with rewards during the official release as a token of thanks for their contribution in developing the game during the EA period. Soon after the official release, around November, there are also plans for a large scale level expansion update in Bless. Yes, that's what we're looking forward to. That would be pretty cool. Also nice that they're finally getting down to that gem localization. How does the update cadence of Bless Online look post launch? How frequently can players expect content update and how big will those updates be roughly? There will be a large scale update around November that includes the addition of new dungeons along with the level 50 expansion. After that, there are updates planned for new dungeons and restructuring of the Rift of Time and Space, skill expansions and more. We will be looking at the player influx and player opinion and will adjust update schedules and plans accordingly. As always, we will continue to work hard to bring a new variety of content to Bless for our players to enjoy. Well, yeah, that's usually the standard. It usually depends on how the game's doing, the speed of updates. We all know that from all the other Asian ports. Beyond content, will there be any kind of in-game events or seasonal events to look forward to? And the answer is, of course! The best up will be the Halloween event for the month of October. After that, we will be working hard to prepare seasonal appropriate events for NA and EU audience. We also have the monthly attendance events, which will aim to 
provide a variety of rewards that both you and returning users will be satisfied with. We are preparing future promotions as well, such as a seat or caster promotion, a rune break prevention promotion, oh yes please, a dungeon drop rate promotion, yes, and a hot buff promotion. We think all these events and promotions will help players enjoy blessing the more. Well, you can never say no to events, like, seriously, events really help games. When a game is boring or stale, an event can make or break a game experience. Especially in the long term, because if you want to commit to an MMO, there has to be something interesting to do. Can you offer an indication on what the next big update for us will be after launch? And they mention again, it's the level 50 area, yes. What final words would you like to share with the person? We can't wait for official release, and we are very grateful to the community for all the support they've shown us and Blessed Line throughout Early Access and Beyond. We have more in store for after the release, and we're working, as always, to make it the best we can. Thank you. Well, I enjoyed the interview overall. It's a nice interview. I will definitely speak more about it in the coming days, as I'll get more info in a few days regarding the direction they're going and all that. I don't know when my next video will be however, but yeah. I hope you enjoyed this video and subscribe if you like it, give it a like or dislike if you didn't. Give feedback, positive, negative, it's all fine by me. If you have something that you really wish to be told to the developers, then just leave a comment below. And thank you once again for watching my video and peace.